Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia Derivative and managed by LiveChamp. Today, we are very excited to bring to you this webinar topic that is titled How to Benefit from Bull and Bear Markets with Index Futures. Okay, welcome to this webinar. My name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this webinar. So before we begin, just want to do a bit of background check to see how, uh, you know, what is your experience when it comes to uh, futures trading. So uh, maybe uh, if you are, let me just let us know if how many years of experience you have in trading futures. So if you are totally new, have never traded any futures before, maybe you type zero. All right, zero stands for zero years of experience. If you have some years experience, then you indicate, right? Are you three years, four years, five years, 10 years, 15 years? All right. So uh, let me know how many of you here. And uh, so that our speaker today, all the way from Singapore, will be able to cater the content to your level of understanding. All right. Okay. Uh, Vincent, are you reading this? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm are, you, are you reading the, the yeah reading the chat box right yeah all right cool okay i got about 20 to 30 responses right now okay fantastic so it looks like most of you here have uh fewer than one year experience now, huh? okay with uh, exception to a few people who have more than five years experience okay great so let me tell you more about futures so futures is a contracts a standardized agreement that obligate buyer and seller to deliver some things in the futures date. So on Bruce Arm Malaysia, there are a lot of futures contract and uh, index future is one of the popular ones. So in a bear market, what we can do, okay? Uh, aside from, uh, you know, in a bull market, most people can make money, okay? Buy low, sell high in the equities market. But in a bear market, you know, the short selling is pretty restrict, uh, rest uh, con uh, constrained. So, but we can actually short uh, short the equities market through index futures as an alternative, right? We can use index futures to gain a short positions uh, to help us to hedge our equities portfolio. So index futures can serve this purpose, all right? So by trading futures, you're able to, you know, make money from both directions, whether it's bull market or whether it's bear market, giving you a recession-proof income. So today, we're going to study how do we do uh, how do we benefit from the bear, bull, and bear market with index futures? So before we begin, all right. So this is disclaimers. So whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give you any recommendation to long or short any futures contract. So if you decide to make any trading or investing decisions, you are hundred percent responsible for all your investment or trading risks. Okay. All right, so allow me to introduce our speaker today. And uh, we, have, we are very honored to invite him to come to our program today to share with you about index futures. He is a veteran in the industry and he is coming all the way from Singapore. All right, so uh, Vincent Tai has been in the futures industry for more than 25 years, so more than two decades worth of experience. He had worked at, in a independent futures commissions houses and bank back brokerage departments. So Vincent started as a booth clerk on the Singapore International Monetary Exchange, CMAX floor, and through hard work, strong appetite of learning, move up the ranks with management support. So during this time, Vincent has expanded his knowledge on listed derivative products and gained industry debt recognition. So besides managing a round-the-clock sales dealing team, Vincent has, was instrumental in setting up representative offices in Hong Kong and Bangkok. In recent times, Vincent is focused on managing a proprietary trading book, pre-IPO corporate asset activities and fintech projects. So his trading portfolio includes equity indices, commodities and currencies, and uses futures and options on futures uh, to engage the market. So Vincent has an MBA in financial management, qualified by Ministry of Education in Singapore to lecture on economics, risk management, corporate finance, financial markets, and entrepreneurship. He is effectively bilingual in Mandarin and English, and was invited by local media to participate in panel discussion on macroeconomic trends, and social issues. So, Vincent, welcome to our program today. Thank you. All right, so let me uh, hand over the session to you. Without further ado, you may go okay. ahead and uh, do your screen sharing. Okay, screen share ready. All right, 
Um, thank you, Shane, for the introduction. And uh, thank you for Live Champ as well as Busa Malaysia for this opportunity. I thank you for the 30 odd or probably more than the 30 odd uh, Malaysian friends who are logging in onto this uh, webinar now. Uh, I saw a question earlier uh, for index, is it better to use CFD or futures? I think I'll answer that towards the uh, Q&A session. And uh, just to kickstart, um, I think most of you are very, uh, very shy. You know, when Shane asked the question, how many years of experience have you traded? Most of the numbers were zero. Oh, uh, well, if you have been experienced, just say, you know, because if not, then uh, you'll find that certain, certain way of uh, illustration later when I want to share uh, the knowledge and experience with uh, the, the audience like you, you may find, hey, I may or may not know. Hey, actually, I know something. So I think at the end of the day, this is a platform for sharing. This is a platform for learning. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's basically an exchange of uh, idea, exchange of opinion. At the end of the day, the market is always right. Mm. Okay, end of the day, the market is always right. We are just uh, uh, a so called, uh, how should I say, a player in this uh, volatile uh, situation where I try to extract, hopefully, to extract capital uh, gains from the markets. Now, as what Shin has said, I spent what 25 years on the sell side, now I'm on the buy side. So, you roughly know how old I am. Allow me to remove my glasses to conduct this uh, <laughs> webinar probably, okay? All right, you want to go full go. screen? Sorry? You want to go full screen for your no presentation? Need, no, need, no need. it's fine, okay? You, you, uh, I thought full screen is more, it's easier for them to see. Sure, you, you want me to go full screen then? Yeah, PowerPoint mode lah. Okay, can. Okay. Okay, so now, today's agenda, I will talk to you about uh, this, uh, how to use KL, uh, FKLI futures, which is your domestic index futures, okay? It's your domestic index futures contract. contract. And because we are talking about spreads today, all right, is to me, to me, okay? And to some of you, you may think that, hey, why are, am I talking about spreads on FKLI? And what is it all about? I'll take you through it. And today, because it is a singular product, Tonight, we are talking about only a singular product, one product. In this case, it's FKLI Futures. We need to understand what is it all about. So for those who have more than uh, one or more, more trading experiences, you probably would know what contract specifications are about. Okay, now this is actually the gist. The types of spreads, then how do you initiate? How do you liquidate? And how do you actually extract capital gains from here? This is the part where I'll share more, all right? Of course, Nothing goes without, you know, in all trading, we need to understand how, how the margin requirements works and as well as our discipline and money management. All right, all these are important as well. Now, for some of you, you may or may not know that for your domestic uh, FKLI cash index, which is actually, uh, uh, how should I say? The, the national cash, the national uh, index, for example, in Malaysia, is called your FKRI index. It's actually a report card. It's actually an index to tell the whole in whole world the investors how well your economy is doing, how well your domestic companies are doing. So in short, it's a reflection, okay, to the outside investors to say, hey, this uh, FKRI represent this based on what has happened uh, previously. What is it now? Where can it go? I think it's a good representation to tell people, okay, from a holistic point of view, they say, oh, okay, Malaysia is worth investing in. So this is actually your number one the report card to the whole world. Then later, they'll just look at it uh, from the sector point of view. From sector, then they look at the company point of view. So in this case, okay, in this case, uh, there's this uh, FKI futures contract, which is a derivatives. That's why they always say, Futures is a derivatives, all right? Because without the cash component, the futures has got no lean. There's no price. You cannot lean on anything, L-E-A-N. You cannot lean, yeah? Now, later I'll share with you why without the cash index, it cannot lean, all right? I'll share with you later. If you go to the BUSA uh, website, okay? The contract code is FKRI. And the underlying instrument is this cash component. Contract size is 50 ringgit. That means for every move, okay, the PL for a single contract of exposure is 50 ringgit plus minus, okay, profit or loss. 
the fluctuation is 0.25 because it's one full point. So if let's say it moved by 0.5, like 1596 to 1596.5, you'll get the PNL is 25 ringgit. All right, if from 1596 to 1597, the PNL will be 50 ringgit. Okay, now when you're fresh, now that we are just started less than five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, this part is important, huh? price limit. Okay, I'll tell you why is it important later. Now, a lot of uh, um, people, they always say, hey, forget about the contract spec. Lah. I just know the opening time. I just need to know the opening and the closing time. I just need to know the, the thick value good enough already. But, but if all of us have been following the market for the past recent three months, you know that the market has been very volatile due to many reasons, interest rates, geopolitical, COVID, all right? You'll notice that you'll notice that you need to know the price limit because without understanding the price limit, okay, sometimes we get ourselves not in positions that may incur more losses than we can anticipate. So please kindly take a look, regardless of which contract, uh, futures contract you're trading, this is important. So for your FKLI, your price limit is 20% per training session for the respective contract months, except the spot month. Okay, what is a spot month now? Spot month is the current month. In this case, we are talking about April contract. J, okay, on your training screen will be J, the April contract. So 20%, Except the spot month. The spot month that means can move 20% up, 20% down in, a, in any trading day. The next month after April is May. Ah, if let's say due to any, any positive, super positive or super negative uh, fundamental development, the market moved by 20%, ah, the contract month May will be restricted by the 20%. Okay. Now, then it says, there shall be no price limit for the spot month. There'll be no price limit for the second month contract for the five final five business days before expiration. In short, if this is the May contract, five business days before expiration of the second month, yeah, means what? Means probably 25th of May, right? Uh, there'll be no limit. That means it's allowed to fluctuate as well. And next to calendar quarterly months. Okay, this is some, this is probably a little bit confusing, but let me share with you how do you actually understand this? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Busa website. Okay, this is a Busa website. Based on contract spec, what they say, it says that the spot month. If you look at a spot month, it's the April contract. Can you see here? April contract. Okay, opening price and the settlement price today. Okay, April contract. Yeah. Now, then it says the next month. The next month, can you see it's a May contract? Yeah, the May contract. Okay, opening price this morning, closing price this evening. And the next two quarter, next two uh, calendar quarterly months. So after May will be June. Okay, June is a quarter, isn't it? How does it work in quarter? March, June, set December. March, June, set December. So it happens that, okay, the next quarterly month happened to be June. Okay, so your June price, again, 1584 was opening price. Closing price, settlement price is 1594. And the second quarterly month, which is September, okay, you see September 22, opening price this morning, 1581, and close at 1583.5. Okay, so you can see from here that this is exactly as according to the contract specification. Okay, so you can see that this part is being explained already. All right, so the spot month, Give me a minute, let me uh, manage your screen. Yeah, so down here, it says that the spot month, the next, the next month, and the next two calendar uh, quarterly months done. And the quarterly months are your March, June, September. Okay, now trading hours. This one you have to know, of course. Okay, what time does it open? 8.45, 15 be minutes before the cash opens and 15 minutes after the cash close for lunch. Okay, and it opens at 2.30, reopens at 2.30, close at 5.15. There is a T plus one session here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it means that for today's trade, uh, for tonight, if you execute any trade from 9.30 until 11.30 p.m., it's good for the next day. In this case, it'll be traded tomorrow, 27th of April. Now, this is a 
This is something you need to manage. Huh? I'll tell you why we are talking about spread trading because of this also. Because of this also. No fault of the exchange is designed this way, but we need to manage. Okay, need to manage. I'll tell you why I say this later. Now then, I'm um, sorry. Then they say that the last business, the final trading day is the last business day of the contract month. All right. And the settlement is cash settlement. That means in short, if let's say you long your KLCI uh, April contract at 1593, come uh, 31st of April, if the market settled at 1594, all right, you'll get a 50 ringgit uh, credit into your uh, account. This is unlike your BMD another contract, which is a commodity contract, which is a CPO. I believe some of you are very familiar with. That is a deliverable contract. That means the seller may have to deliver the, the CPO to the buyer and the buyer would have to pick up from the nominated uh, pots again. But for financial instruments, it's usually cash settled. It's very clean, very, very clean, yeah? Okay, the final settlement value and the speculative position is for information, all right? And this is the components as of... Uh, as of 19 of uh, February 2022, this is a KLCI component. For those who are new, uh, who have indicated zero years of uh, future trading experience, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that your KLCI was your component. You look at the banking, okay, your CIMB, Hong Leong, Hong Leong Financial, Maybank, RHB, and a public bank. If you add up all this, yeah, okay, I believe the percentage is about 35%. So it's slightly more than a third. It goes to show, it goes to show that if let's say the banking stocks, okay, has any movement, okay, if let's say the banks announce bad results, all right, you will more or less be inclined to understand that the, the cash index will probably be a little bit weak, yeah, because of the component weightage. Okay, because of component weightage. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, two years ago when COVID just started, all right, you'll have all the glove making company, you know, shooting through the roof, isn't it? Ah, that is also affecting the KLCI as well. So if you look at this on a totality, okay, if you're a blue chip investor, if you're a blue chip investor, you will probably look at all these stocks, okay? But if you're a futures person, okay, you want to look at how the, the, the cash market is likely to be, I think, paying attention to the weightage okay, of the companies or sectorial basis is important. It's important. Now, then you, then you probably ask, how does the futures price comes about, right? How does the futures price comes about? Now, oh, someone asks, is the weightage change daily basis on the market? No, 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 no. The weightage does not change because this is uh, prescribed by the exchange, okay, based on the index. And I think, I think in this case is uh, FTSE. FTSE will actually design the, the weightage, okay, based on sectorial. All right, Sam, I answer a question. Okay, now, um, is the next question Sam asks, FKRI opens at 8.45, KLC open at 9. Why the FKLCI seem to know where the KLCI move? Okay, no, it does not mean that. What it's trying to say here is because, okay, this is because some the futures market try to capture, in this case, capture what happens overnight. Okay, remember just now I shared with you, your KLCI, uh, your KLCI uh, T plus one shuts at 11.30 p.m. Ah, but the New York market still, still trade, isn't it? So actually the 15 minutes, okay, for the futures market is to actually take into the account of the overnight uh, US trading, okay? So nobody have an edge in this case. And the weightage is based on, uh, in this case, uh, FTSC is FTSE, yeah? They are an uh, index construction company. They, are, they construct indices, okay? So they will prescribe, all right? They'll prescribe, nothing to do with BUSA. BUSA just outsource them to do it. They just list a contract. Okay, now you ask, how, what are the pricing in, in, in futures? How, what are futures price all about? So in short, it's a cost of purchase of the basket of KLCI blue chip stocks. Now, how did your KLCI cash flows today? I believe it's 
1596.68. All right. So this is 1596.68. And risk free returns. Risk free returns have to be based on your domestic contract again. In this case, it will be your maybe your government bond, Malaysian government bond. All right. Say one year. One year so far, I last checked is about 2.03%. So if you convert it wise, uh, that you you domicile you uh, you change it to value wise is zero point zero zero two zero three, okay. So you want five nine six point six eight plus zero point zero zero two zero three, and the next one, anticipated or declared dividends with corporations till the expiry to the expiry of the futures contract. In this case, let's assume it's an April contract, okay. Let me share screen with you again. Okay, let me share screen with you again. April contract. April contract, you look at it, the closing price is 1596, correct? Can you see where my, where my cursor is? Yeah, 1596. Okay, 1596. So now, your cash price today. Okay. Your cash price today is 1596.68. Your risk free is 0 0.00203 based on one year Malaysian government bond yield. All right, and if let's say we talk about anticipated declared dividends of the blue chip, let's assume it's six six percent, is zero point zero zero point zero six. So all in all, these are the components that made up the futures price. But I can almost certainly share with you that the futures price, okay, the the the, the cash price of this uh, KLCI blue chip stocks is almost like ninety eight or even ninety nine percent, make up the futures price, and you have this. Now, for those who have been trading long enough, you say that Vincent, not right, not right. The, the futures price can be lower than the cash price. Yes, I agree. I agree. But if you go to futures 101, that means basic futures, when the April contract, the futures contract, that's an expiration date, correct? Remember the last business day? The cash price and the futures price will converge. If let's say the cash is over the futures, the futures price have to catch up to the cash price. All right, so there'll be no, uh, no possibility of uh, arbitraging, okay, in this case, yeah. So therefore, this is what I'm trying to share with you, that this is the component. However, most of the time, this to me is theoretical, is theoretical. What is important is how are you going to interpret the price? Okay, trading strategy, as you all know, huh? bull, buy, bear, sell. All right, now you notice that a lot of retail traders like us, if we do buy, if the market go down, we get stop out, capital loss. If we short, market will shoot up, we get stop out again. That always happens, isn't it, right? So range trade, yeah, you pick some pocket money here and there, you know, uh, okay. So you notice that bull and bear has a binary outcome. It means it's either you're right or you're wrong. All right, despite the amount of homework you do, despite the amount of homework you do, all right? So sometimes market just can go against us, all right? So in order to, end of the day, why are we talking about spreads? Because, because I personally believe that if you can stay in the market long enough, all right, you will be able to learn from the market, learn from the trading experience, be it good or bad ones, and one day you can accumulate that experience and slowly you can monetize it. That means you are able to get capital returns over a period of time. So to me, staying in the market is important. Staying involved to trade is important. If let's say many retail traders, okay, or so-called speculative traders, they say, oh, I lost money 10,000. Forget it, I'm not going to trade anymore. All right? They lost the experience. They lost the lesson. They can never come back or they don't want to come back. I think that is probably really a pity. That's a really a pity. Then they'll say, oh, futures trading is very risky, but they lose 10,000 in share. Oh, never mind, like the company still there. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you see, that, that's, the, that's the rationale of uh, futures trading. So my point here is, ladies and gentlemen, spread trading, if let's say you execute properly, all right, will prolong your stay in the market. When you prolong your stay in the market, you have a better chance of succeeding. That is my point why I, I find that this is a topic I feel that I could share with you, okay? And also to actually 
put you in a different, uh, let, me sh- let me share with you and, and, and let you have a different perspective of how to manage this futures trading. It's not as scary as it thoughts, okay? It's not as scary as you thought it is, it's not, all right? Okay, now, uh, before I go into what exactly spread trades are, I'll share with you what are the categories. Calendar spread, okay, the word calendar means what? It's a time, that's a tenor, okay? That means a long tenor, short tenor. For most of us, you'll be looking at what the US Federal Reserve Chairman has been talking about, right? They're talking about the two-year, 10-year, 30-year. Ah, that is a calendar. That is a tenor. The tenor is two-year, 10-year, 30-year. Then you look at U-curve. Is it inverted? Inverted by how many uh, how many uh, basis points and so forth? That is calendar. Okay? So in short, if you see calendar spread or sometimes you call it time spread, time, T-I-M-E, it's the same. It's the same. Or sometimes they can also say it's intra-commodity. In this case, tonight we are talking about intra-commodity. Why? Because it's the same product. In this case, it's the FKRI. It's the same product, except we are trading different months. Remember the month, the contract months? April, May, then followed by your June and September. Ah, you see? Ah, except trade different months. Okay, so we talk about the tenor, the, the difference in the tenor. Then you have this uh, intercommodity spread, okay? Now, for example, uh, I think most of you, okay, even though you may or may not have a uh, trading experience, you probably heard about CPO, right? Uh, so you can do your local CPO contract against the uh, uh, Chicago Binoy contract. There's, some, there's such intercommodity uh, spread as well, right? Or if let's say you're an index person, you're an index person, what you can do is, for example, you find that, hey, uh, s and uh, US s and is not, is still bearish because of whatever factors you think it is. You can probably short the s and and buy your local KLCI because you think that maybe KLCI has a better uh, chance of uh, appreciating because maybe the funds are coming to emerging markets and Malaysia could be a beneficiary. Ah, you can do that as well. So you look at intercommodity, that means it's what? It can be an index. Different, uh, different index. One could be in US, one is your domestic one. It can be a commodity, can be bean oil against your palm oil. The next one will be inter-exchange spread, okay? Now in this case, uh, exchange means what? Like Busa is an exchange, all right? Singapore SGX is an exchange, all right? So it can be an exchange spread as well. For example, if let's say, uh, ah, recent days, China, Yesterday, China down 5%. Today, down at 2%, right? Yeah, so you find it, wow, China, the, the stock market, very bad. But very difficult to get access. So in other exchanges, there's this, uh, this uh, contract, okay, which can allow you to access uh, China uh, markets through a futures contract, okay? So what you can do is, oh, in order not to take a directional bet, you may not want to take a directional bet. You don't want to take a bull or bear bet. What you can do is maybe you can buy KLCI, okay, and sell another uh, exchange product linked to China because you think China is coming down. Ah, that is called inter-exchange, uh, inter-exchange spread. That means what you can do in local and sell another one off, your, off Malaysia, could be domicile in Singapore under SGX, okay? It could be, okay, that particular contract. So you can have this spread as well, yeah? Okay, that can be done. Ratio, as the word suggests to you, ratio means the difference in size, all right? But we'll talk about, we are not gonna focus on this today, right? We just, I just let you know there's such things around. Okay. This is a little bit of uh, academic, uh, a little bit of academic, a little bit of uh, understanding what's it all about. Now, spread trades. As the simultaneous purchase of one security and sale of related security colleagues as one unit, usually executed with options of futures contracts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't be too worried. Now, the thing here is, I believe some of you who are very seasoned stock traders or stock investors, you can you can probably long set, I mean, you may want to, I just take an example, you may want long CIMB sell RHB, right? It's a spread trade. It is a spread trade, except in this case, you are doing a spread in the stock market. Futures market, you can do this as well. But the keyword here is what? Simultaneous. Why is it simultaneous? I explain in a while. Okay, the keyword here is simultaneous. Simultaneous purchase of one, sale of a related 
it must be related. Uh, don't sell something not related, then it's not spread, uh, right? Then the correlation is if it's out, then you have a problem. You become two position difficult to manage. So sometimes I call it legs. Okay, you don't worry about that. Okay, you call it legs, that means it's like that. Okay, one set one, yeah. Uh, so this legs expressed as a unit, as a unit executed with options of futures contract. I just I share with you, right? Can be calendar spread, can be inter exchange, intra inter commodity. Options, if you have things, you have uh, time uh, in the future, there'll be things like what long call spread, short call spread, butterfly spread, all those things. All right, uh, it can be done. Spreads are executed the U and overall net position, whose value is the difference between the prices of the legs. So, in short, you remember just now I showed you, right? You sell CIB, buy RHB, then there's a price gap, right? Ah, that is the U. La. That's the U. Okay, futures is the same thing. So in this case, what we're trying to do is if you think KLCI for the near term is bullish, okay, you buy the near month bullish one, then at the same time, you sell the back month, which is, in your opinion, could be a little bit more challenging, more bearishness, ah, same thing. So therefore, the, 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 the difference in the prices is your yield. Okay, if you long, what you want the market to do for you to get the capital returns. If you short the near, long, the far, then what you want the market to do to for you to gain capital returns. That we'll talk about in later. So basically, it's expressed as a price. Okay, expressed as a price. Common spreads are priced and traded as a unit of future exchanges, ensuring simultaneous execution and eliminating the risk of one leg executed but the other failing. Ah, okay. These are much more for sophisticated uh, traders. And this is also sometimes uh, one of the way to make more money, okay? Or lose more money. <laughs> now, down here it says that for spreads, okay? On the future exchange, later I'll show you one, sh uh, one slide, okay? They'll tell you that based on the different months, all right, there's always a price. For example, uh, April to May was a price, April to June was a price, April to September was a price, and May to September was a price. That is a price. So that means this is traded as a unit, traded as a unit. So you simultaneous uh, execute, that means you long shot at the same time, so you don't worry about legging leg out. However, however, there are spreaders or spread traders, we call them, okay? Spreaders who actually do their own legging, that means if they find that the market sentiment is probably more bullish now, they'll delay the selling leg. They buy first, okay? But the minute they find that the market is turning lower, they may not want to sell this leg. They may not want to sell the long leg. They may want to sell a different one. Why? Later, I'll tell you why. Okay, later, I'll tell you why. The spread trades attempt to profit from the widening or narrowing of the spread. So basically, it's again the function of price. Okay, because the yield, you execute it as a yield. What do you want the market to do for you so that it you know, depends on the widening and narrowing and that's where your capital gains are lost comes in, yeah? Now, actually, spreads are, are just an extension of what you know. As I shared with you just now, okay? You look at the uh, indices, for example, your US indices, or you look at uh, your own uh, KLCI indices, okay? You use fundamental analysis to justi justify a uh, spread trade. For example, now you find that, hey, wow, China, uh, very bad. You know, the, the, the COVID situation is not so good. Then the global logistics backlog could be challenged again. However, you find that, hey, you know, give them a couple of months, they could be better. So in short, you feel that they, maybe this quarter earnings, May, June may not be good, but September may pick up. Ah, these are the expectation of your work forward earnings. So there's a spread that can be constructed based on that. Fixed income, as you know, interest rate movement. Now, Jerome Powell last, last Thursday, was it? Last Thursday or last Wednesday, he said, I will front load the interest uh, uh, hikes. That's why you see the yield curve inverted. That means the nearer month, uh, the nearer tenor, the interest rate seems to go higher. Ah, see, this is fixed income, interest rate movement, the movement of the yield curve. For precious and base metals, agricultural commodities basically is demand and supply situation and seasonal factors. 
Energy, besides demand and supply seasonal factors, they also have geopolitical factors, as we all know, uh, experience, we are experiencing right now, isn't it? Yeah. So I wouldn't go through it too much because we are we we are in the market, we know. Yeah. Okay. We are going to the, the theory plus uh, practical part already. Okay, a bit of theory and practical already. Now, spread trades. The velocity of a spread trade is simply much lower than velocity of the individual legs. Why? You notice that you long and short the same product. You long and short at the same product. And what can the market do? The market can only go in one direction at any one time, correct? It's either up or down or sideways. Market can only go one direction at any point in time. So therefore, therefore, if you long one, short one, no matter where the market move, you are contained within here. You are contained within here. Then you ask, ah, yeah, then what's the point? I don't make so much money. But on the other hand, you don't make so much money, you also don't lose so much money, right? <laughs> That's why I say staying in the game is much more important. Okay, it goes back to why I shared with you just now. Staying in the game is much more important. Yeah. Okay, so velocity of spread trade lower than velocity of individual legs. So in short, it's delta neutral. Okay, delta neutral. This part you need to know, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This one you need to know. Margin requirement usually less than the sum of the margin requirements for the two individual futures contracts. For those who are new to uh, futures um, trading, please understand that margin requirement is like cover charge, a refundable cover charge for you to participate. Okay, in short, uh, if you are participate to, to short the KLI futures contract, you must have at least 4,200 ringgit in your futures trading account. All right, 4,200, that is the initial margin requirement. Now, down here, it says that less, margin requirement is less. Let me share with you, the outright margin, that means you long or you short, does not matter, long and short participants pay initial margin. At this point in time, I believe it's 4,200 ringgit per contract. However, if you put on the spread trade, okay, a pair of spread, that means you can long the near, short the far, or short the near, long the far, is only 750 ringgit. So in short, you're talking about five and a half times. Ah, okay. So that means your cost of entry into the futures trading, uh, uh, futures trading arena, okay, is five times lower. So if let's say it goes back to the point here, why? Because you are not taking a binary uh, outcome trade. You are not actually betting on a bull trade or betting on a bear trade. You are actually locking a bull and a bear and you just want the spread price to move in your favor. And that's why the spread margin is lower. Based on what I understand now, it's 750 ringgit. All right, it's 4,200 ringgit. So we're talking about five and a half times. Okay. So in short, that means your cost of entry, cost of trading has lowered significantly. That does not mean, that does not mean, wow, I, I, I can do five times more or five and a half times more. Okay. I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't suggest that. And I'll explain to you later why. Now, the spread trades tends to trend for a longer time frame. Yes, because it's tenor based. It's tenor based. So for example, you, you talk about May and September. Yeah, it takes a longer time frame. It's unlike your day trade or probably two or three days based on daily chart. You, you, you trade in and out based you know, to realize capital gains or capital loss. So the time frame uh, plays a part here. Yeah, okay. This is something uh, we need to know, okay? Especially for those, uh, if let's say you are engaging in the pump oil or probably any other form of trading or even reading okay or even reading a certain certain article you need to know what is called backwardation or contango market as of now okay as of now most uh i think uh klci is uh is a backwardation market or called premium market the cpo is a backwardation market okay that means the near term the nearby month is higher than the back month okay what does this thing tell you that means people are more uh, optimistic of the near term as compared to the further to the to the deferred months 
right? That means the, op the optimism wane off after May. Come to June, wow, not so good. You see the price? Yeah, I extracted this price was sometime last week. However, just an example, this an example, yeah? If it's a reverse, okay, the nearby month, wow, COVID situation, no good, okay? But we believe that the, the this um, uh, logistics issue could be solved. We find that the corporate earnings will be better. Ah, come June, ah, okay. Ah, see, the full optimism is there. But as of now, as of now, ah, let me share with you, ah, as of now, ah, you look at it, you look at uh, April, closing price 1596, May closing price 1596. Now, the reason uh, I think as of now, you probably wouldn't want to price in April because it's coming to expiration. Another five days come to expiration. But you look at May 1596. Okay, how about June? You look at June. Vincent, you muted yourself. Sorry, I yeah, you wrongly. accidentally muted yourself. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Get too excited clicking all this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, anyway, yeah. As I say, uh, as of now, okay, the April contract is 1596. You look at it, FKLI April contract settlement 1596. May settlement is 1596. Almost, it's the same price, but we don't take the May contract now. Why? Because it's coming, uh, we don't take the April contract because it's coming to expiration. We look at the May contract. Now, May 1596, then you look at next month, June 1594. We say it's two points, right? Two points. However, you'll say, hey, if it's a two points only, what's so big deal? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you see two points, uh, the spot month, uh, in this case, May turning to spot month already, the deferred month is in June, uh, it's, lower, it's a lower price. Uh. Candidly speaking, that means this based on the market expectation, market participants, they are not so optimistic, isn't it? Yeah, they are not so optimistic. Then you say, nah, cannot be. La. Then we see. La. Never mind, we see. We see September. September 22. Wow, jala. 1583.50. You notice it's almost 10 points off uh, June. And uh, as of now, it's probably what? 13 points off your May. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know. Uh, okay, this is as of now. Uh, this is as of now. Uh, in case things uh, turn for the worse or turn for the better, which you know we, you and I do not know, these spreads can change, these prices can change. Uh, so the structure of the, the, the market can change as well. But as of now, as of now, uh, you ask yourself, if come September, the price is 1583.5, now it's 1596. You're talking about nearly 13 points away. Do you want to buy your underlying stocks? This is a question ask yourself. Do you want to buy blue chip stocks? Because as of now, as of 26th of February, 918 now, the market is telling you, hey, no good leh. No good leh. Ah, okay. So the market gives you uh, this sort of information where you can decipher. Okay, we can decipher. Okay, so therefore, uh, it says here, if you buy a spread, that means you buy near, you sell far, nearby bullishness. Nearby bullishness, that means longer term, not so good. If you sell spread, you sell May, then you buy June, that means you anticipate huh? uh, more bullish news later. All right. Okay, now how do you start a spread trade? You can use tanker analysis to justify a spread trade for initiation and liquidation. All right, again, we talk about direct dealing. That means you, you look at the trading terminal, okay? The trading terminal could be like that. They tell you April to, they tell you uh, April to May is minus one, April to September plus 12. So you want to buy, sell, you look at bid I offer, you just hit the screen, okay? Now you can do this. This one reduces the risk because you do both legs at the same time and you enjoy spread margin, which is 750 ringgit. But if you do legging in, uh, you do legging in, uh, uh, this is where I share you. If you do legging in, you find that, hey, I think the May contract can go higher uh, because maybe tonight all the NASDAQ, uh, S&P go up 2%. I buy the May first, then I short the June later, can also. But you buy the May first, you're paying 4,200 ringgit first. Okay, 
you cannot base on 750 ringgit because 750 ringgit is on the premise that you get, you sell the, you buy the May and sell the June together. But if you want to buy the May first and sell the June later, you pay 4,002 first until you sell the June, then maybe the broker will adjust end of the day at 750 for you. Okay. Now, I'm based in Singapore. Okay. I'm not sure about the Malaysian practice. I understand there are some variations, but let me also be very straightforward to tell you that the Singapore regime is much more kiasu. Okay. Uh, much more kiasu, so much more stringent. What they do, they say that if you buy May before 5.15 today and you sell the June from the T plus one session, they treat this as two outright. That means you pay 4,002, you pay 4,002. Until the next day, that means on the 27th of, uh, of uh, April, about 11 o'clock, once they finish a the midday run, then they will apply spread margin. So in short, in short, if you don't have 8,400 ringgit initial margin, not forgetting variation, uh, not forgetting variation, uh, you don't have 8,400 ringgit, you cannot sustain this trade. That is why I'm trying to tell you, margin is important. That's why I shared with you earlier on, oh, I can do five times more. No, not exactly. Okay, these are practical stuff. These are practical stuff. A lot of people say, never nah, mind, I do this, got T plus one, I lock in later. What? Maybe you can, but at the end of the day, you must understand that if you, because of the trade date is different, because of T plus one, the treatment is you pay 4,002 here, you pay 4,002 here. Until the T plus one, they run the date, uh, end of day run or whatever, then they can apply your 750 ringgit here. You may, if let's say the market go to adverse uh, 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 movement, uh, okay, adverse movement, uh, they, for example, you long May 1st, you short June. You can say, I'm taking long, what? but your account cannot tahan this. And the market drop, uh, they cut this one first. They cut loss this one first. Ah, so be very careful. Okay, this is part of risk management. This is part of practical already. Okay, I'm sharing with you. I'm a practitioner. That's why I can share with you. If not, then I tell you, oh, a lot of people say, oh, you can do this, do that. Yeah, lah, on paper. Wah. But when you go to the real execution, this is how they treat it. So that's why I share with you just now. Does not mean that it's 750, uh, five times, uh, five and a half times less. You can do five and, a half, five and a half times more. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Okay. End of the day, go back to your risk appetite. Go back to your risk appetite, okay? Don't say because the risk is lower, you can do more. No, no, no. Okay? Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Okay. So, uh, Lee, just now you saw this, right? Okay. All these prices, yeah? Okay. You go on trading terminal. Okay. You probably can see minus one and minus 1.05, you know, be an offer, blah, blah, blah. So, basically, there are spreaders who code this. There are spreaders who code this. So, if let's say we are do, if let's say you are a, uh, a trader or your fund manager, okay? You find that, hey, what, whatever is coded, the size is too small. Only two lots, five lots. Very difficult, you want to do 20 lots. Sure, you can call your broker, okay? They can do this RFQ request for quotes. Then they'll get to the market maker to give you quotes, yeah? Then you can do larger sizes. No issue, okay? No issue. Legging. Legging, I showed you just now, right? That means you do one side before the other. You want to buy the near, sell the far. You probably sell the far first period. Maybe the market goes higher. Okay, you can use tanker analysis to do that. Okay, and then this requires day trading skills. Okay, this requires day trading skills. Some like day trader may or may not be able to perfect it as well because day trading, as we always say, you want to have more good days than bad days. Okay. You have more good days than bad days. That's day trading, all right? Possibility of market risk as one leg may not be executed at a desirable price. For example, if because you buy May first, you sell June later, you may not get at one. You may get worse price or better price. It depends. Because market move, ma. Because market move, right? Yeah. Now, this part, okay? Use of tanker analysis. I find that as of now, okay, you can use a little bit of technical analysis for day trading skill from the perspective of an individual contract month. But if you look at the spreads, yeah, be very careful. And there's always, when, when, when some other uh, materials, I saw other some, uh, some materials, they always say that for spreads, there's always a mean reversion. Mean reversion, M-E-A-N, 
R E V E R S I O N. We mean reversion, and let's go back to what it was before. I think we have to be a little bit more careful here. Why? Because uh, if you look at last five years or even last seven years, we don't have this thing called QE. So therefore, we don't have this thing called QE or quantitative uh, easing. Okay, your interest rates technically go beyond, uh, uh, go below zero, or probably even below the cost of money, or even negative. Now, no central banks, okay, are hiking interest rates, okay? So therefore, if you do the mean reversion, on what basis is the mean reversion? Ah, so if you use five years, then that means the mean reversion may not likely go back there because of policy change. So this part, as I said, is a very practical thing already. It's very practical. If you're staying in the market, you know, mean reversion sometimes can only do so much. But if you talk about five-year, 10-year horizon, the whole, the whole dynamics of the, of the monetary uh, policy has changed. So mean reversion is mean to what? So the premise is what? So therefore, why are you benchmarking against mean reversion? So be very careful when anybody or when you do mean reversion, what is your premise? What's your parameters? Okay. So this part, I talked about it already, right? Yeah, remember, huh? remember, <laughs> you, you, if you want to leg, that means you want to do one leg first and execute the leg later, can make sure you have enough pocket first, enough money first, huh? okay? Now, the next thing is, the next thing is, if let's say you execute at the same price. Now, one, one thing I want to share with you down here, okay? Since you're on this, on this slide. Um, Pre-COVID, I attended almost every uh, palm oil conference. You know, they have the gala dinner at Shangri-La uh, organized by uh, Bursa Malaysia. Every year, they give an award to the top local. Local, that means the, the person who got a badge from the Busan Malaysia and started trading on his own account on the exchange floor. Now, these are the people we call spreaders. How they become so big and why are they so successful? They actually, the skill is in day trade and how they leg in, leg out. Okay, now remember just on what I shared you, right? If they buy the May, they buy the May, the May goes up, they hold back shorting the June. They pay 4,002 here, right? But the minute if they, they say that, hey, you know, I find that probably May has run its course. I think the market likely to take an intraday or probably have to turn lower. I shot the June. You tell me, why wouldn't they just liquidate and take the capital gain and, 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 and forget it, right? No, because if they shot the June, what does that mean? From 4,000 to ringgit, the uh, margin requirement reduced to 750. That means they can do more, right? There's a margin savings there. When their margin savings, they're able to do more. And then intraday, they, you don't know what they do. They can probably buy three, sell two. Uh, it's called ratio already, right? Then they can do funny, funny things here. They can even do May, June, May, September, then June, December, all this and that. I can honestly tell you, this is day trading skill. Your day trading skill is actually where the money is being made in spreads. And the day you lock in spread is because of capital efficiency. Okay, spreads allow capital efficiency. That is a key point. That is a key point because with capital, with capital efficiency, you are able to last, you are able to withstand the market volatility better. That's one. And secondly, you can, you can uh, probably uh, take advantage of the intraday within the day. Now, yeah, within the day, look at the, the chaos here. It may not move as much, but within the day, you can pocket maybe a few points here on the long side, pocket a few points on the short side. You can. That is why it gives you flexibility. This is where it gave you flexibility. In the end, for example, you know, you, you lock in the spread, you long May, short June. Tonight, you happen to want to listen to this Singapore Mota guy, Vincent Talk. Okay. I uh, say, okay, uh, let me hear him talk, see what he, he why why he can talk, you know, see what he can offer. Right. Then you don't have to worry because you are locked into it. Your exposure is 750 ringgit. Okay. Either way, either way, all right, you are in a way secure, unless the market moved by what? 20% more. Go back to contract spread, I show you right. 20%, right? If go by 20%, in case if this is the May, it's a spot month, goes up 20%, you might can jump because your May will have no limit. This one maximum 20%. 
okay? But if you come down this one, then you have a problem because your June, okay, maximum 20%, this one may drop more than 20, okay? Again, there's still a risk involved, okay? Again, there's a risk involved, but at least this one can cushion part of the risk here. All right, this is what you say, a black swan event in case it happens. So this is this, this slide I spent some time with you. It's not because it's on numbers, it's because inside this slide here, there are many ways of how people make money through here. Of course, on the other hand, say, hey, there are of course people lose money. Half la, you know, for example, during the, I see with my own eyes, during my exchange floor days, you probably heard about bearings, right? Bearings, the UK bank. This guy, Connick Eason, he betted on the Nikkei. Yeah, he probably betted the long spread. But the COVID earthquake come part, the whole spread turned the other way. Become the, because once, once there's a natural disaster, what happened to near month? The near month, the, the sentiment will be compromised, right? So we bump down. Then this one down more as compared to this one. This one probably down 25%, this one down 20%. You have 5% uh, capital loss ready. All right, it can happen as well. It can happen as well, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that reduced risk does not mean no risk, yeah? Reduced risk does not mean no risk, all right? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, what advantages of spread trading I showed you just now? Uh, tends to trend for a longer period of time, okay? Yeah, you, you look at the past uh, few years, if you look at the markets, okay, has been actually based on discount. That means the spot month lower than the back month. It's trend lower period of time. Okay, if you're able to capture that, yeah, yes, it's okay. And that is why I keep stressing, stay in the game. Stay in the game. Lower capital outlay, I showed you already. Okay, I'm not going to uh, repeat. Disadvantages, of course, it's not as rewarding as an outright trade. It takes longer time to realize capital gains are lost. Yeah, okay. You can't have the cake and eat it. Lah, huh? Okay. Now, you may say that it's, uh, it's uh, slow. However, if you have been following a crude oil market, okay, you see what did, uh, what did uh, this, um, sorry, what does the headline say? Collapse in oil curve shows US release has come market. And this, I took this article on April 4th. It goes to show that, you see, WTI, that means the crude oil six month backwardation time spread. You see time spread? It's a calendar spread at pre-invasion. That means the spread actually tumble. You look at the spread, okay? You see tumble. From the uh, super back, it tumble now. I think nowadays, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think May, Ju uh, June, July now, for the crude oil TI is probably doing a dollar, okay? It's doing a dollar. Okay, now this, uh, you ask yourself, just now I share with you, right? How do you know whether uh, your, your KLC is moving higher or lower this and that. I extracted this from a, uh, from a research house. They talk about equity fund flows. If most of you are in the equities space, you probably would know the fund flow. But I just share with you that this, uh, no doubt, is uh, past information. No doubt is dated. However, it's good knowledge to have. Uh, I have not shown, the, I do not have the latest one, but uh, on the PowerPoint, but I have the latest one in front of me. Let me share with you. It says that the key takeaways from the wiki fund flows are ended 22nd of April. Today is 26, so it was last week. It says here KLCI rose 0.8% week on week due to the return of foreign buying. Foreign investors return as net buyers after a week of net selling. Local retail investors remain net buyers for the second consecutive week. And local institutional investors posted their 11th consecutive week of net selling. So your so these are you know information where you can actually pick it up from all the research houses. Okay, you can just read it for your fundamental knowledge. But please understand that uh, the fund houses, the institution investors may or may not be right. Okay, may or may not be right, and their time horizon mandate could be very different from ours as well. Okay, but it's good knowledge because at the end of the day, they will push the market. They will still be able to push the market. Okay, this is a snapshot of what happened over the past 12 months. Okay, what happened to KLCI? You notice that it is a, actually it's fairly well behaved. If you look at it, 1500, you probably have a base, 1600, you probably have a resistance. Yeah, 
So if you talk about the past year, it's 1,500, 1,600. So in this case, you can say, hey, Vincent, I do all right better. Can, can, you can do all right. But during this period of time, you look at June 21 to August 21. Wow, you do all right. You buy, you know, you probably will not be, you probably won't be too happy, right? Uh, down here, you say, oh, it should be down here. Uh, August, September, wow, like that. You see, you shot, wow, jala. the market go up. See, but the spread can let you tahan, okay? Understand that. There's a reason to everything, okay? There's a reason to everything. Okay, now, end of the day, trading psychology. More or less, we have to be a risk taker. Lah. In whatever we do, we got to be a risk taker. Um, I'm, I'm a bad example of uh, being a risk taker. I mean, this uh, futures trading and uh, so-called, which is a, a high stake, uh, high stake, uh, fairly speculative industry, but I, I do not know how to cycle <laughs> because I'm afraid I may fall. I'm a 100 kilo man. Yeah, if I fall, that means you know, I probably break my bones or break my arms or whatever. But okay, look at it. Who, what sort of character are you? If you can take the binary outcome, that means long, if the market goes uh, against you, you're prepared to cut loss, go ahead. Probably spread is not for you. You ask yourself, yeah? Because every strategy suits everybody differently, all right? Uh, so it does not matter if you don't like spreads, okay? Does not matter. Emotion, stay focused, calm and reflect. That's why I shared with you just now, stay in the game. The longer you stay, the longer you are able to learn from a past mistake, the better you will be at the next trade. You believe me. You believe me, you become more calm. It comes to trade. It comes to training, and it comes to tell you that hey, <coughs> sorry, it comes to tell you that hey, you must stay focused. Don't because hey, uh, what happened? Or oh, your friend asks you to go out, you go out. No, no, no. Stay focused. You need to know that you have a position. As I said, a position is a risk. Unless you clear everything, you go out, have fun, go ahead. But if you have position, you stay focused. At the same time, make money. Also reflect. Lose money, also reflect. Don't say lose money, don't reflect. Make money, don't reflect. No, 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 no. Both you reflect. Why? What have you done right? And you've done right. It's not because you've done right this time, no. It's because market happened to be right for you. Ah, okay, understand that. And the next one is also consistency. Okay, you must consistently update every day, every minute, if you can, if you can. If you are, let's say, you are working adult, then probably, okay, probably you have to find some time to, to do some work to understand how the market actually uh, uh, function, how the market actually move, yeah? Ego, use it appropriately, stay humble and do good. Mm. In short, as I showed you at the beginning, we are just passer by in a very big, in a big sea of super sophisticated computers designed by men, okay, to extract capital gains. So if we are able to stay humble and always say, oh, okay, today I did well, how am I gonna do the next day? Or oh, today I did badly, okay, fine. Let me reorganize, where did I go wrong? Okay, then you look at it again. Is it because my charts uh, fool me? Or is it my candlestick did not work? Or my candlestick last time showed me this, now showed me this? Or how many times it showed me this, fail, and how many times it showed me this, it works. Then you go back and reflect, okay? Now, I always believe in doing good. If you've, I mean, last two years, you and I know, we are neighbors, man. We are neighbors. We are, have many people who, are, who fall below this support line where they don't get much government support. If you can help, if you make some money, take out some money and help, okay? Not give everything away, lah, right? You need to reward yourself, but you know, if you can, within your means, you do a little bit, yeah? Understand that trading is a business. Don't trade it as a hobby or speculation, okay? Now, you probably will heard about what Robo Advisor or Robin Hood, yeah? They, they trade in what? Um, What's a, a man, maybe stocks, all those things, right? Yeah, where the fundamentals are not fantastic, but it's just retail driven. Now, let's be professional about it. Let's be very professional about it. Money are hard earned. Yeah, money hard earned. So if money hard earned, what do you want to do? 
you make sure that even if you make or keep it properly, if you lose your file, where do you lose it? Okay. Don't because people say, oh, it's a fashion, you go and buy the whatever crypto or go and sell whatever, whatever it is. No, 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 no. Take it as a business. Now, understand this. If even you trade stocks, a stock is the reflection of the company business, right? Now, which company open up to lose money? No time. Don't have. So therefore, in order not to mismanage the company and lose money, you treat it as a business, think that this is slowly going to recoup for you. And if you understand from stock 101, stocks are perpetual instrument. That's why I go back to what I say earlier on is that stay in the game, very important, all right? So treat trading as a business, don't trade as a pastime, no. When you trade as a pastime, your attitude is Salah. Once attitude is Salah, everything is Salah, okay? Perception that trading is an easy way to wealth. Well, I can tell you like, nothing is easy. Like, making money is the tough, toughest part. Okay, It's hard work. You need to understand how the market works. Constant study, discipline, and no one to blame. You started, you are responsible to end it. Very important, you need to eyeball the market. Eyeball means constantly look at the market. We stare at the market every day because it's not my work. But if let's say you have a full-time job, but you, you uh, want to do this on a, say a part-time basis, then you need to schedule yourself. You schedule yourself. What time do you want to eyeball the market? You need to eyeball one. You need to. You don't eyeball, you don't have the feel, okay? The chart can only do so much for you, all right? The chart can only do so much for you. You need to eyeball to get the feel, okay? Just a very simple, uh, a pair of, look, okay? Just like COVID, why do you think so many of our Malaysian friends stuck in Singapore want to go back home? They want to see their family. They want to hug their family members. Every day Zoom no use one. Right? Just like you, every day, oh, okay, certain price is this, high low is this, look at chart like that. But nothing beats looking at the price, how it moves. Just like our Malaysian friends in Singapore, it not, beats nothing that they can go back home to hug their family members. That is the best example I can give you, okay? Now, most investors lose money because they fail to use sound money management techniques. Uh, techniques are not hard to understand, but many, but for many, hard to implement. Psychological barriers, especially facing a losing trade. I think these are all very common. Okay, end of the day, you are yourself. You need to fight. You need to, that's why I say, cut the ego. Sometimes the trade is not working for you. You just need to cut the ego and let it go and come back again. Okay, we come back again. So end of the day, we have to say uh, that if it's not working for you, it's not working for you. Then you reorganize, come back again. No, no one is going to tell you, hey, why you don't trade every day? No, you trade every day. You look for reason to enter the market. You don't enter the market for no reason. Understand that, okay? Because when you enter the market, you need to put deposit. Why you risk your, why you risk your, your, your money where there's no reason for you to engage? Ah, so understand, do your homework first and discipline. you find that, hey, I need to cut loss, I need to cut loss. I need to take my profit, I need to take my profit. There's always this case, when you take a profit, then the market can running in your favor. Too bad, law. what can you do? But don't forget, you don't take what happened and turn down again. Right? Every time you said that, you take the market run up, you don't take the market come down. <laughs> right? Ah, so tell yourself, you want to avoid this sort of emotional thing, right? So learn to be disciplined now. Once you become disciplined, you say, okay, every trade I, I target how many percent return, you become more objective. And that's why I go back to what I said just now, you become more calm. Calm and focus. Calm and focus. Okay? Right? If every time, every trade, okay, out of 10 trades, okay, you probably, out of 10 trades, you make three trades, okay? Every trade you make, say, 2%, you have 6%. Okay? You have 6%. Then three trades, uh, you break even, you don't do win, you don't lose. Then every trade, you have a stop loss of 0.5%. You lose 1.5. You still land at 4.5 up. Think that way. Think that way. Okay? We always say, you have try to have more good days than bad days. All right? Yeah. Uh, what are the resources? I think there are plenty, especially in today's environment. Uh, with Zoom, is borderless. Uh, careful with uh, internet websites and news vendors because sometimes they skew a lot of funny reports. Um, yesterday, uh, around 7 o'clock, I think it was 7, 7.15 our time, 
Um, this uh, PBOC relaxes is a foreign exchange uh, so-called reserve requirement. You notice that the market ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, right? Yeah. Why? Because nowadays there are so many algorithms. There are so many algorithms. They say, they see the word PBOC, release, relax, or whatever. Wow. So you go up. Then after they, they say, it's only foreign reserve, bah, come back down again. So that's why you see when this, especially in today's environment, there are a lot of disinformation. Be selective. Be selective. All right. Sometimes slower is better. Lah. We are not we are not in the algorithm game or in the super AI game to be even the AI can can also lose money because they interpret the headline wrongly, ma, right? Okay. Now uh in Malaysia, there are many very good brokers. Okay, many very good brokers. Uh, go and talk to them. Go and talk to them. They will be able to provide you with more education, your software, your data services, and then navigate the platform. I think you will learn much more from there. Okay, I've taken quite a fair bit of time. Uh, it's a uh, what fifteen minutes to ten. Uh, let's do Q and A now, shall we, Shane? Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Vincent, for doing this uh, webinar, how to benefit from the bull and bear market with index futures. So yes, um, any if you have any questions, you may write in the Q and A box, and our speaker Vincent will uh address those questions. Yes, feel free to type your questions in Q and A, not the chat box. All right. Now, have, Vincent, have you talked about, you know, for index, right, CFD or future is better? Oh, okay. This is a Busa event. I cannot talk about CFD. <laughs> so talk <laughs> about futures, okay? Now, uh, can, you have to understand there's a difference between these two. CFD, if you, if you trade on the CFD, you're against a broker, whereas you trade against the Busa, you're trading against the clearinghouse, the... the the financial uh, backing regime, okay? Now, there are a lot of uh, discussion on this. The advantage of CFD is, if let's say the market open gap up or gap down, most, I believe, uh, due to competition, uh, I believe due to competition, they, they will say that, hey, look, you know, we'll guarantee your stock price. I think most of our brokers will say that for CFD providers. Why? Why are they able to do that? Because they pocket, they are very likely on the other side of your trade mark, right? But for futures, no. For futures, if gap up, gap down, your stop loss could be done away from your prices, okay? But they have a premise to tell you there's a time and sale, okay? By the exchange, you say that this is a price traded, you cannot complain. So now, on the upside is that, what happens if the broker fail? Your counterparty on the CFD fail? Okay, then you probably your 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 money or your equity or your position may may be compromised. But with our futures, your money is guaranteed after minusing market risk. Okay, after minusing market risk, you probably some of you may not be aware that you know, hey, all these brokers so rich are bank back, they don't have problem, right? Yes. You know, to some extent, it's true, but don't forget, even their bank back, there's always an arm slang. There's always an arm slang. Uh, years back, I, I can't remember which year, but in Singapore, there's this a company called Man Financial that went down, and a lot of CFD trades went into uh, disarray. You know, some other banks have to pick it up, and then most of the investors may not be able to exit the trade in time at the price they want. Because when, when a CFD provider goes down, Okay, just like a stock is being is being suspended for trading, just like a stock is suspended for trading. When a stock is suspended for trading, there's no price for you to get out. That is what I'm afraid. Whereas for futures, okay, as long as the market is open, okay, fairly liquid, you will be, you will have the uh, avenue to get out. So from the from the perspective of um, uh, it depends on, on, on you. So I wouldn't say which one is better over which one. I, 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 get, I list you the pros and cons already. So you make your own decision. Okay. Thank you so much, Vincent, for addressing the question. The next question is by Stefan Lai. Can market makers see your stop loss and stop you out in futures trading? Before they stop you out, they have to stop how many people out first? How far is your stop out from other? How far is your stop loss? 
before they hit the stop loss, they have to clear, don't know how many layers, right? Okay, for example, if let's say the, the price is of 15.96, your stop loss is at 15.88, okay? Now, how can the market, the market makers have to clear 15.96, 15.95 half all the way down, you know, and they do not know the quantity here. And market makers are not in the, not in the business of stopping you out. Market makers are in the business of making prices and straightly make arbitraging profit and get out. They are not in the business to stop you out. If they if it happen to, because of market volatility, they happen to trigger a stop, then it's too bad. It's too bad, but it's not what they're looking for. Now, don't forget, okay, in the trading terminal, all right, just like in stocks, okay, there's this iceberg function. They hide the size. They hide the size. They hide the size they want to buy. They hide the size they want to sell. For example, if let's say an aggressive, uh, if let's say based on what you have said just now, they want to trigger your stock at 1586. They need to clear 1596 all the way down to 1586. They do not know how much buying is there. If the buying is thin, too bad. It could be. However, if the buying is, is iceberg, then at every price they come 50, 50, or even 200, 200, then the, the seller will be worried as well, right? Because don't forget, this is not a zero sum game, no? For every lot, they have to put in 4,200 ringgit. No? Fair not. Uh, it's a very capital intensive thing. So don't, don't think in terms of that. I, I think uh, that I know from the retail perspective, they always say, I always put a stop. They are always uh, get triggered either at the high or at the low. I understand. So what's the next way to overcome it? Be disciplined, put inside your heart. Lah. Come, cut. Come, take profit. Don't put it on terminal. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, but if you're eyeballing the con if you're eyeballing the market, it come to the level you need to be disciplined to cut or take profit. That is important. If you don't want to place in the terminal, it's possible, but you must be disciplined. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stephen, you know, further clarify that uh, what he meant was within ATR. What's ATR? Um. Is that a technical indicator? Average range? Maybe uh, Stefan can uh, clarify for a bit. Yeah, average true range. Uh, I think so. Yes, he clarified that there's within average true range. I think maybe he refers to the stop loss. No, end of the day, the, I, I believe... Uh, I, I believe the what this uh, average true range, I, I don't quite understand this question because... In order to trigger a stop, okay, they have to clear many layers of buy and many layers of sell. So I don't think that is something you are looking at because don't forget, as I said, there's always many buyers and many sellers on top. So it depends on where you place the stop unless, unless the market is moving uh, in a very adverse direction, then it's likely. Or even if let's say the market is thin, it's possible. However, under normal circumstances, I probably, if let's say you place it, very near, obviously, the, 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 the chance of getting uh, triggered is very high. Yeah. So I want to know if, if let's say, may I ask, how many percent are you placing away from it? Let me phrase the question the other way around. How do how many percent do you place a stop loss from the current price? Is it one percent? If it's one percent market move by one percent, obviously you'll be stopped out. Right? Let's be as straight as it is. As straight as it is, yeah. Mm, okay. Um, the next question is by Kelvin. Um, his question is: Can I say that uh, CFD could be market made by themselves, while exchange is a third party to be a gatekeeper to ensure retailer and the market makers playing is a fair ground? Um, I okay. Let's just say that uh, the exchange is uh, governed by the um governed by the central bank, okay? So exchanges have license, they are governed by central bank, they have licensed brokers to carry out the business as well. Now, CFD is slightly different. It's just, uh, it's a trade between, it's a bilateral trade between yourself and the, and the brokerage company. Now, mm, I would say that in this uh, particular aspect, yeah, there are a lot of flexibility in, uh, uh, CFD because you can adjust the contract size, you can adjust um, contract size and probably uh, uh, 
it's probably much more liquid to some extent, I should say, because you are trading against a, a brokerage house. Whereas futures, sometimes you, you, you can't adjust a contract size because it is a fixed. And I believe sometimes CFD trade off hours as well, which the futures do not. But at the end of the day, I think you need to know where you want to safeguard your deposit. Do you want to trade in a regulated environment or in a not so regulated environment? Uh, if I'm not wrong, CFD is probably not regulated by the regulators. Okay, it's probably not regulated. Futures trading are. Okay, so again, where's your risk appetite? Risk appetite in this case will be a regulatory risk appetite rather than a market risk appetite already. Okay. Um, CT Chan would like to ask the next question. How do we treat the extended market data? Do we treat it as today's trading data or the next day trading data? I don't understand the question. Uh, you know, we have extended trading hours, right? Extended oh, the T plus one? Yeah, I think the, the evening session. Oh, the T plus one session. Okay. Yeah. Do we treat it as today's data or next day's data? That's, that's his question. Oh, you mean on the chart basis, is it? Is it based on tanker analysis basis or the data? Because I, I don't understand. Uh, are they talking about the, the data? Is it the price chart data? Is it? Okay, if yes. let's say it's the price action, let's just assume it's a price action. Yeah? T plus one, the price action. Okay, we tend to actually uh, lump it together. T plus one for the next day one. For the next day. So like if all the trades happen at 10 o'clock, 10 30, so you'll be added to the uh, candlestick next day. The next next day, day, day. Huh? Yes, yes. Mm. All okay, right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is one part I shared with you just now. Your, okay, because the exchange structure this, uh, this BUSA, they structure this FKRI until 11 30. Yeah? So your FKRI does not capture the uh, afternoon session until late session of US market close. So therefore, there is a, a market risk, okay? There's a market risk if you take a binary contract. That means you long or short from 11.30 until the next day, 8.45, you can have nowhere to get out, am I? Okay, so that is a risk you, you need to know. So the spread, okay, at least can help you contain the, the risk, okay? At least until the market open. That's what I'm trying to say just now, yeah? Okay? Okay. Um, the next question is by uh, Chong Kam Fat. Who are the market makers for FKLI? Oh, please call up. <laughs> please call up your brokers. They will, they should, should let them know. Don't worry. <laughs> mm. Yes. Okay. So the next question is by Sam. Uh, I noticed that the uh, FKLI always move ahead of the KLCI in the correct direction. Uh. Why is that? Oh, because KLCI is a parent. As I say, KLCI is a parent. FKLI is a son. It's a derivative. The cash and the futures. So they have to move in line. They definitely have to move in line one. Okay? Except sometimes, as I say, the, the remember just how part of the slide I shared you, the cash price could be higher, the futures price lower. But when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, expiration, they will actually uh, converge at the same price. All right? Converge at the same price. Yes, because it's an underlying... The FKI is the underlying of Kelsey, so they'll move in the same direction. Mm, he he wanted to clarify that uh, why futures always move ahead of the cash. Oh, because uh, go back to what I share with you just now. Okay, remember when I share with you the FKI is a report card to the whole world investor before they want to look at which stock to buy. They buy the basket first, right? The basket, how to buy the basket? Buy futures off. If they are bullish on emerging market, they are bullish on Malaysia, before they pick which stock, which sector to engage in, okay? They say, okay, let's do the futures first. I do the futures, then at least I take a, a so-called a, a small exposure, a small exposure, which is mandated based on their fund, based on their fund or, or, or whatever mandate, okay, they have a Malaysia exposure, then they're able to do sectoral, then probably they slowly buy certain of the underlying stock and so it reduce the future exposure. That could be the reason. Mm, okay. 
so uh, the evening trading volume is uh, so small. So do we take into account for price action and part of the market psychology? Uh, yes, because yes, I do agree that uh, the trading is small. Okay, the trading is uh, volume is small. Um, in your this uh, T plus one. But the thing here is uh, the trading psychology does not change whether the volume is big or small. Right, it does not matter. Sometimes small, then the you have to understand if it's small, then the 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 whipsaw could be higher as well. So the psychology part does not change. So um, the the part is that when it's small, then if let's say you have a outright position, how are you going to lock it in? Or are you not going to lock it in? The question is yours already, right? So uh, based on what's the other part of the question, I may not answer it correctly. What's the other part of the question? Um, do we take into account of the market psychology? Oh, yeah, as I say, when, the, 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 yeah. the price of the T plus one for at this point in time, uh, at this point in time, uh, your T plus one, the data you can port it over to your day, day session the next day. Mm, okay. Now, in uh, you know, we know that uh, you know, investors, we are human, right? We are emotions. So the next question is how do we train one person's uh, discipline uh, so that we are able to cut loss mechanically <laughs> when you lose your pocket you'll learn no? <laughs> okay hey, come on you don't <laughs> no, 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 no. okay very 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 straightforward i was a broker before okay when a customer or an account is on margin call technically the customer surrendered the account to the brokerage company when the account is being surrendered to a brokerage company, the brokerage company will find all rules and regulation within the account opening form to stop you out. I can tell you, you have no recourse. <laughs> you have no recourse. You go and open an account with any brokerage company. You look at all the fine words, da, 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 how many pages you sign your life away, right? Yeah. So they say, hey, why you, you come out? Why you cut loss? Why you cut loss here? Not here, not here. You can argue until the days come, until the accounts come out. That's not matter. The minute the legal say is inside this clause two point something, uh, then don't just say that you lose ready. So the key thing here is if you don't cut loss, you are, you are surrendering the the cutting loss to another party. Why do you want to surrender that to another party? The money is yours, what not theirs, what? Mm. Okay. okay, that is a good point for us to remember. All right, so let's do one last question, yeah, uh, since time is running out. So uh, this question is by Lee Yao Lam. How do institutional funds hedge their futures position? They usually long uh, the cash, then use futures to hedge. They usually long stocks, then use futures to hedge, rather the other way around. Or probably, or probably what they can do is they can also use options to hedge. Okay, they probably can use options to hedge as well. Yeah, so there are many variations. It depends on the exposure. It depends on the tenor. So if you say that, uh, if let's say they don't do uh, cash, okay, how do how do they uh, hedge their futures position? First, they can look at maybe a proxy, as I shared with you just now. If let's say they they short KLCI, are they going to buy S and P? Are they going to buy Singapore to to do a proxy hedge, or are they looking at a KLCI uh, options market? to hedge against exposure, all these are possibilities. Mm, okay. Thank you so much, Vincent. So what to, what we learned from you today is that, uh, you know, spread trading is a relative, is, a, is comparing relative strength from one month to another month. So it's a lower risk is compared to outright trading. Uh, so if, but of course, if you want to do hedging, then you have to do outright trading, lah, correct? If you long cash market, then you have to go short the outright futures market to, to gain a, a hedging position. Am I right? Yep. All right. So that's, that's what we uh, learned from uh, spread trading today. We, we learned, you know, a lot of ideas about what kind of spread trading we can do. Uh, I think just now Vincent and Shai have as many spread trading uh, types that we can do. And uh, we also learned a great deal about uh, spread trading. So hope that you all have walked away with good value from this session. So uh, thank you so much, Vincent. Yeah, by the way, uh, if you all wish to get connected with me, I'm on LinkedIn. 
Okay, if you want to get connected with me, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, if let's say on LinkedIn, you can just kindly share your comments. I would like to improve my delivery to everyone, so that in my future uh, sharing, I can just uh, understand your needs more. And at the end of the day, is learning. I learn from you. You learn from me. Right. So if you can connect me on LinkedIn, and uh, we'll talk. And again, I thank you, uh, uh, Shane and the Busan Malaysia and all those people and all the audience that have turned in on this late evening session. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Now, let me tell you more about our, you know, touch and go giveaway event. All right. So uh, how are you going to get and win the 30 ringgit touch and go is that uh, you must answer our survey. So at the end of this webinar, you know, the survey will be launched. Or uh, if you did not see it pop up in your screen, uh, no worries, it will also be sent to you tomorrow via your email. So you just answer one of them. So uh, we just want to collect feedback, lah, okay, to see how else, uh, how else uh, we can improve uh, or how well have you done for this segment and what other content you want to hear. So if you respond to our survey, which will probably take you less than two minutes, then uh, you will be in a running of getting uh, to be one of the lucky winners for this 30 ringgit uh, touch and go e wallet reload pin. So we will email the reload pin to you uh, within two weeks. All right. So what you need to do is you know after the webinars conclude, then fill up the you know I think seven to eight questions. Then uh, you know, leave us your feedback for us to evaluate how well we have done and what else uh, we can improve. All right. Then uh, ten of you will be awarded. 30 ringgit touch and go reload pin. All right. So for our next futures webinar, uh, it's going to be on this topic, which is level up your trading portfolio with BMD futures. Um, today, our session is on spread trading using index futures, which is FKLI. So in our next webinar, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, trading futures uh, as general strategies like we talk about how do we swing trade fkli instead of doing spread trading we talk about how do we do swing trade fkli and we also talk about how do we do day trading fcpo so uh it's happening on 26th of may 2022 uh, 8 30 to 10 p.m uh, i've given you the registration link and then uh, i will type it here again in the chat box so that you can register again for this session you want to take your futures trading understanding to a higher level yes please come to this webinar not only we do this webinar for you for free but we also give away the ringgit ringgit uh, touch and go uh, touch and go e-wallet reload pin to 10 of you every session all right so remember to show up and answer our survey so with that thank you everybody for tuning in to the webinars this evening thank you so much vincent for sharing with us uh, the spec trading in fkl i hope that all of us here have gained enormous value from this session until then see you in our next webinar on the 26th of may level up your trading portfolio with bmd futures with that uh, have a great rest of the day guys see you in the next session bye everybody thank you good night